talking about elections in this class, in order to run a successful campaign, a uh, candidate needs a lot of things in the United States. One of the things that he, that he needs is people that would work for him, competent staffers. Competent staffers. He needs a staff. Advisors, pollsters, cam um, campaign managers, and they're going to need to be paid. Sure, you're going to have volunteers, but you're still going to need to pay for food and transportation for these volunteers. The second thing that they need is transportation. Not only to be able to transport yourself from one place to another, but people that work for you from one place to another. If you're running for president, one day you're in New York, the other day you're in California, and then probably the most expensive of all of this is campaign advertising. Campaign advertising on the radio, on social media, on television. Even though social media has become more and more important, television is the biggest expense. This is where most of the money goes. So candidates that have, when they spend money, they usually spend it on TV advertising. So again, transportation, campaign advertising. All of this to say, American elections are very expensive in the United States. We have the most expensive elections on the planet. Last presidential election, it was estimated that $8 billion were spent in total. That's more than the GDP of a lot of countries. Now, the problem with this is a lot of people in the United States feel that the more expensive our elections get, the more power and influence the wealthy have over our politicians. That money has to come from somewhere. And usually candidates don't have enough money on their own to be able to spend on their own campaign. Even those that do, like Donald Trump, they don't want to spend their own money campaigning. So they have to depend on contributions from individuals, from groups, from corporations. They have to depend on contributions, money given to them. Now, a lot of times the people that donate are the wealthy people of the United States which means a lot of people in this country feel that our politicians are being bought by wealthy corporations, by wealthy individuals. If a politician gets two phone calls, one from an ordinary person in the United States and one from Bill Gates or Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos, then he's probably gonna pick up the one from the wealthier person. So today in the United States, we have a problem that the wealthy and individuals have more influence over the candidates and over the people that will end up in government than we do as the American public. So a lot of the decisions being made by the government today are not serving the interests of the many, they're serving the interests of the wealthy people of the United States because they're the ones funding these campaigns, making sure that the people that they like get elected and making sure that people they don't like lose. Thankfully, we do have election laws in the United States. The most important one is the Federal Election Campaign Act. The goal of this law this was passed in the 70s, is to limit the influence of money and the wealthy in our elections, to make sure that the wealthy corporations of the United States, the wealthy individuals in this country, are not just able to pump millions and millions of dollars making sure somebody wins or making sure somebody loses. According to this law, number one, individual contributions to campaigns are limited to $2,700. If I have money and I want to help a candidate that I like win, I can only give him $2,700. Even if I have more money than that, I'm not allowed to give him a single cent more, according to FICA, according to the law. If I give him more money and he accepts more money, we would be violating the law together. Corporations, interest groups like the NRA, they're able to create these groups called, or these uh, organizations called political action committees or PACs. Through these PACs, Corporations and interest groups are able to raise money and donate money to candidates. However, according to the law, PACs are only allowed to give candidates about $5,000, give or take a few hundreds of dollars because of inflation. Any question? So if I was a labor union, if I was an interest group, if I was a corporation, I could create a PAC, I could raise money to that PAC, and then I could give money to candidates that we like so that they can win, but we're only allowed to give $5,000. The intention is to level the playing field, to make sure that not every, that, that everybody's playing with the same rules. That even if I was just a teacher or somebody like Elon Musk, I can only give this much. Even if I was a weak, uh, a poor group or a wealthy group, we can only give this much. That the rich in the United States are not able to give 
millions and millions of dollars to candidates ensuring that they win or ensuring candidates lose. Another thing that the FICA does, it establishes a government agency. We're going to see a video about this in a little bit called the Federal Election Commission. The Federal Election Commission is the government agency, the government body that we have right now that regulates elections, that makes rules, that regulates elections, that makes sure people are not disobeying the law. And they enforce campaign finance laws, enforce campaign finance laws. They make sure that people who are giving money, the candidates who are accepting the money, are following the rules, are following the law. And they're there to punish people who break these rules. And finally, FICA also mandates the disclosure rule. Every single dollar given to a candidate has to be reported to the government. It has to be reported to the FEC. If I'm Donald Trump and I took a dollar from Walmart, I have to tell the FEC about it. I need to tell them how much and who gave me that money. Today, you can go to the government's website, the Federal Election Commission's website, and you can see the candidates and then you can see who gave to their campaigns, who donated to their campaigns, so that you know who owes whom in this country. The result of FICA, the result of this law, is more honest and open elections. More honest and open elections. And it limited the influence of the wealthy in our elections. It restricts the influence of the wealthy in our elections. So this was in the 1970s. This is not going to last long. People especially the wealthy, are going to figure out ways to go around the law. They're going to figure out loopholes in the law. So let's talk about one loophole. One loophole is called soft money. According to FICA, if I was a group, if I was a corporation, and I wanted to support Donald Trump, I can give him money. What's the problem with me giving him money? The law says I can only give him so much. If I was a group, I'm only able to give him $5,000 through my pack. If I was an individual, I can only give him $2,700. But Amazon, Walmart, Netflix, they're working with billions and billions of dollars. They want to do more. They want to make sure that their candidates win so that they can make decisions that would be supportive of their corporations. So instead of giving the money directly to the candidate, what can you do instead? What's the loophole? Give it to who instead? Give it to the political party instead. So instead of giving the money to Donald Trump, I'm not allowed to give more than $5,000 or $2,700. I can just give it to the Republican Party, and then the Republican Party can spend it on Donald Trump. What does the law say about that? How much money can I give the political party? It doesn't say anything, which means I can give a limited amount of money. So this is called soft money. Instead of giving the money directly to the candidate, you're giving it to the political party. Instead, the political party will then use it in support of the candidate. So this is called soft money, money contributed to a candidate's political party instead of the candidate directly. Thankfully, in 2002, the government chose to close this loophole. Today, this isn't a legal thing anymore. There's a limit on how much you can give to a political party today. So this loophole right now is closed. What's not closed is the second one. This is the reason why our elections are so expensive in the United States. So let's say we're a corporation. We created a PAC. We raise money through that PAC. We can give Donald Trump some money that we'd like so that he can win $5,000. Right? What is he going to do with that money? Most money spent on TV advertising, so he's probably going to use that money to produce an ad and advertise his campaign, advertise his candidacy, right? What's the loophole? If you the ad. Sorry? If you pay for the ad. Very good. Instead of giving Donald Trump the money so that he can produce an ad, what can we do? Just do what? Just make the ad yourself. Right? Why do you want to give the money to Donald Trump so that he can pay for an ad? Just make the ad yourself. So let's say she's running for student council president, right? I want to support her campaign. I want her to be a student council president. So I give her $5 so that she can make a poster that she can post in the hallways, right? But what can I do instead? I can just make the poster, right? The difference is 
the government limits the first one, how much money I can give her. But the second one, there's nothing in the law that says there's a limitation on how much money I can spend. I can produce 300 posters for her, and there's nothing the government can do about it. Does that make sense? Anyone confused by that? These are called independent expenditures. So instead of giving the money directly to the person that you're supporting, you just pay for the ad yourself. And for a very long time, there weren't any restrictions on how much money you can spend doing this. So money spent by a PAC or an individual independent of a candidate's campaign. Independent of a candidate's campaign. So we're not giving the money to the candidate, we're spending it ourselves, independent. All right, in 2002, just like with the first one, the government tried to restrict this. The government says, corporations, wealthy groups are not allowed to do this. However, in 2010, when many of you were in elementary school, the Supreme Court made a decision Citizens United versus the FTC that's going to change elections for the rest of your life, right? So here's what they decided. Corporations like Walmart and Amazon in the United States are made up of people. Corporations are people. What do people like you and me have? We said it. We have what? Rights. We have rights. Right? So, which means corporations also have what? Rights. If corporations are people and people have rights, corporations have rights, including the First Amendment's freedom of speech. The Supreme Court said, when your grandparents spent $20 to buy you a toy when you were eight years old, that's them expressing their love towards you, right? When Walmart spends money in support of Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump, that's a group of people expressing their political opinions, and that should be protected by which amendment? by the First Amendment's freedom of speech. Which means any government attempt to try to limit how much money corporations are able to spend in support of a campaign, in support of a candidate, or against a candidate, is the government violating what? The First Amendment. So they told the government, hey, you can't, you're not allowed to make any laws, you're not allowed to put a limit on how much Walmart, how much Amazon, how much the oil companies spend supporting a campaign or opposing a campaign. As long as they're not giving the money to the candidate, as long as they're just spending it independently, there's nothing that you can do. So right now, corporations like Amazon, corporations like Walmart, are able to spend however much money they can producing ads, manipulating public opinion, millions and millions of dollars being poured in, right? Trying to make sure that their candidates win and the candidates they don't like lose. And according to this decision, there's nothing the government can do about it because if the government tried to stop it or tried to limit the amount of money these corporations are spending, they would be violating freedom of speech. So as you're growing up, this is something that you have to struggle with. You may agree with this decision or not, but the core issue here is, are corporations actually people? Do corporations actually have rights? Is spending money actually freedom of speech, right? That's something you're going to have to figure out yourself. But according to the Supreme Court, they are. Corporations are people, and money equals speech. And our cor a corporation, a wealthy individual, spending money in support of a candidate or against a candidate is a group of people just expressing themselves politically. And the government cannot infringe upon that. They cannot limit that. This decision created what we call super PACs. Think of them as like PACs on steroids. Here's what PACs do. What PACs do is they allow groups to donate money to candidates, to give money to candidates. As we all know, that is limited by the government. Super PACs don't do that. They don't give money to candidates. Instead, they spend the money themselves in support of the candidates. They pay for the ads themselves in support or against a candidate. They do it independent of the candidate's campaign. Independent of the candidate's campaign. And how much money can they spend doing that? How much money, guys? Unlimited. Because if the government tries to put a cap on it, it would be the government trying to infringe upon freedom of speech. There's one rule that super PACs have to follow. 
right? Super PACs are usually representing corporations and wealthy individuals. The one thing that they cannot do is talk to the candidate that they're supporting. So if this is a super PAC that wants Donald Trump to win, they have to spend the money without communicating, without coordinating with the candidate. So super PACs are not allowed to coordinate with the candidate. What that means is they're not allowed to call Donald Trump. Hey, Donald Trump, what kind of ads do you want? Where do you want us to publish these ads? Which states? They're not allowed to do that. They have to spend the money independent of the campaign. They're not allowed to communicate. Here's the problem with all of this, right? This one rule that they have to follow. Candidates and super PACs, they disobey it all the time. They blatantly ignore the rule because the Federal Election Commission, the government, is not always there, making sure that they're not communicating with one another. A lot of their super, uh, these super PACs are run by the candidate's brother-in-law or the candidate's lawyer, for example. What are the chances the government is listening in on every phone call? What are the chances of the government being there during Sunday mass or a birthday, right? So most of the time, super PACs and the candidates that they support, they don't even care about this one rule. They talk to each other all the time because they know how ineffective the government is and how ineffective they are at enforcing this one rule that they're supposed to be enforcing. So the government agency that was supposed to do this is called the Federal Election Commission. This video will show you how effective your, fed, your government is at enforcing its own rules. So this is the government agency that's supposed to make sure that our elections are free and fair, that the wealthy in the United States don't have too much influence on the outcome of our elections. But you'll see while politics might be drowning in a sea of money, federal law forbids super PACs from coordinating with the campaigns they support. And there's even a government agency that regulates it. Jordan? So that's the state right now of our government. And to be able to enforce laws, they're really, they can't really do much to stop the influence of money in politics today. So the FEC and our campaign laws are ineffective. And today, wealthy people, wealthy corporations and groups are able to buy our government officials. They're able to make sure that their candidates win and the candidates they don't like lose because of this. And it's probably not going to change anytime soon. Anyone have any questions? Uh, let's take a quiz.